Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of We'll Let You Know, a limited series podcast about fake job interviews for fake jobs. This is episode three, titled Praying Mantis Interviews Hitbug. All right. Hey lady, you hear what? Shh. Behind this blade of grass. Oh hey! Shh. What kind of hit bug are you? I'm the killing kind. Well, please lower your voice. Nobody can know about this. Listen, I appreciate your need for secrecy, okay? I really do. But I've been doing this a long time. And you know what I learned? The harder you try to be discreet, the guiltier you look. So you just gotta relax, okay? We're just two bugs hanging out. Come on, say it with me. Just two bugs hanging out. (sighs) Two bugs hanging out. Two bugs hanging out. Two bugs hanging out. Good. It's just that I'd never actually hang out with you. Wow, okay. I mean, considering you know nothing about me, that's just kind of arrogant, but... No, no, no. I mean, ecologically. Scorpions are not a natural part of this environment. (laughs) We're in Vermont. I think you mispronounced heaven. I am really digging this place, man, okay? The amount of wooden bridges alone just gives it this real rustic vibe. It makes me want to collect rocks or burn leaves. I feel like there's going to be an art fair around every corner. I'm trying to say that if someone sees you, they're going to wonder why you're here. And then they might start asking questions. Maybe I just escaped from the zoo. Or I came all the way from Nevada to try some of that sweet, sweet Vermont maple syrup. Maybe I just want to take a bath in it. Feel it ooze its way underneath my dry, lonely exoskeleton. Soon I won't know where I end and the syrup begins. I don't like this. Exactly. See, you started backing away the moment I made it sexual. That's what I'm saying. If anyone asks why I'm here, I got explanations. And if explanations don't work, I can just make it real weird and they'll just walk away. Oh, okay, okay. I get it, I get it. And as long as we keep it cash, no one is going to ask about me anyway. Right? Right. You could have hired any hit bug in the region, okay? I know quite a few. Word is, there's a wolf spider around here that'll kill anyone you want so long as you find him a nice shower he can hang out in. But you didn't hire that wolf spider. I think his name's Greg. You didn't hire him. You hired me. You hired me all the way from Nevada because you heard that I was the best. And guess what? You were right. Well, technically, I haven't hired you yet. This is still an interview. I want to make sure that you're... What, you want to know my my greatest strength? It's killing. Weakness? Probably traveling hundreds of miles for a job I haven't been hired for yet, but I'll get it. I'll get it. References? Why don't you just go ask the stingray that kills Steve Irwin? Oh, wait. You can't. Because I killed it. You shouldn't blame the stingray. It was just acting out of instinct. In fact, that's the last thing Steve Irwin would have wanted. But that's just it, lady. I don't care about the why, I just do what needs doing. Good, because what I'm asking might be difficult. Oh, I done difficult. A few years ago, someone took out a contract on a baby otter. Oh my god, but they're so cute. Yeah, violently cute. The eyes, the whiskers, the whole package, and, and this otter, my god, you looked at her and it was like, like, a, like a choir of angels hugging your heart. And she looked up at you, and you and you think you might cry, but you don't want to cry. Because you don't want the tears to blur out your vision of her. You don't want to miss one millisecond of that stupid, beautiful outer face. Because, because looking into it is like, it's like looking into the maw of God. I love otters. Yeah, me too. And I killed it. Oh. I dropped her favorite stone on her head and watched her float limp down the river like it was nothing. Because I'm a professional, and I had a job to do. So, you still got reservations about me? Come on, lady. I'm the right- No, I wish you would stop calling me lady. Okay, my name is Tess. Wish you hadn't told me that. We don't do names here. Oh no, what's gonna happen? Probably nothing. But, if I ever get captured, and they try to extract your name by torturing me, it's easier to convince them I don't know your name if I actually don't know your name. Captured? 
It's never happened. Don't worry. It's just a precaution I take. Can I pay you extra to kill yourself if you do get captured? The fuck? I don't know. I don't know, okay? I don't know how any of this works. I'm sorry. Well, it doesn't work like that. You know I'm immune to my own stinger, right? Doesn't mean you can't slit your own throat with it. Jesus Christ. Or swallow a bunch of sand or dirt until you choke to death. I mean, there are many ways that- Alright, cool it. Sorry. Fine. Okay. I'm sorry. I want to hire you. You sound like you can get the job done. And who do you want me to kill? Besides myself, apparently. Well, first of all, I just want to say that I never thought I'd be in a position like this. Okay, I was just a normal praying mantis. I, I grew up with a single mom, just like everybody else. I, I made a nice life for myself, live in a really great empty lot where a local bookstore used to be. Sign of the times. Actually, they closed it down because the owner was running a brothel out of the poetry section. Poetry section, yeah. Also a sign of the times. Actually, the poetry section was heavily frequented before the brothel. The section just happened to be located in the basement, so it was naturally the best place for the brothel. Well, fuck me. Never mind. So I had a good life. But my husband... It turns out he's not the praying mantis that I thought he was. So I need him dead. He's the target? Yes. And I need it to look like an accident. Or like someone else did it. Because when he dies, everyone is going to assume that I did it. And why is that? Because we're praying mantises. Sooner or later, the female always kills the male and he eats his head. That's just how it works. So, of course, I'm going to be suspect number one. Well, if that's just how it works, then why do you care if everyone thinks you did it? I mean, I'm not trying to talk my way out of a paycheck or anything, but why not just do it yourself? Because I got kids. Two beautiful boys, and I couldn't live with myself if they thought I killed their dad. It's my fault, I mean. See, the female is supposed to kill the husband right after he impregnates her. So the offspring never usually meet their father. It's tradition. But I couldn't do it. I didn't have the heart. There, there's a lot of peer pressure when it comes to sexual cannibalism when you're a kid. You, you grow up hearing about it. There are songs about it. And no, I'm not going to sing you one. I, I, they even teach you how to do it in school. You practice with a twig. But I could never get into it. It just seemed so barbaric. So... When the time came, I let him live. And we had kids, and of course they love him now, and here we are. Kids always complicate things. Yes, but they are worth it. My sweet Rodney and Howie. Damn it, I said no names! Oh God, have I put them in danger? Only if I get captured. Are you certain I can't pay extra for you to kill yourself? Alright, you know what? Sure, yes. You pay me double, no, you pay me triple. And I will totally... Definitely kill myself. You will? Yes, 100%. You're just gonna take the money and not do it, aren't you? Nope, I'm gonna do it. Swearsies, you'll do it? What did you just say? Swearsies. As a proud member of the Order of Scorpions, Arachnida class, Celeserata subphylum, Anthropoda phylum, Animalia kingdom, I must uphold the sacred traditions of my forefathers and honor any and all swearsies. Then say it. <laughs> now you got me, okay? No, 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 no way. I'm not killing myself, okay? My life is just way too cool. I thought so. So your husband, you let him live, and now you want him dead. What's his deal? What did he do? What did he, what, did he cheat on you? No, no. He just cheated death. After I let him live, he began looking at life with new, bulging eyes. He'd been given a rare opportunity, and he seized it. It was marvelous at first. He'd frolic through the grass while it rained and, and danced beneath the raindrops. <laughs> He'd rub his front legs together even when he wasn't being devious. But, but slowly, this, this lust for life, it mutated into something more sinister. You know, no mantis we'd ever known had ever lived so long. And here he was alive and in his prime, and he began to feel indestructible, all-powerful, uh, like a god. You know, he'd, he'd look at our fellow mantises, and, and he'd, he'd whisper to me, Do you see them, Tess? Do you know who they pray to now? They pray to me. Soon, mantises started turning up dead under unusual circumstances, uh, like one was missing her eyes, another had been torn in half. And my husband managed to convince the whole village that a ragtag group of beetles across the pond were to blame, but I knew better. <laughs> Everyone likes the beetles. Occasionally, you'd meet somebody at a party who claimed to not like the beetles, but you knew they were just saying that for attention. So I, I knew it wasn't them. It was him. 
And I could see it in his face, that cruel sneer where a loving smile used to be. More mantises died, and somehow he got us to go to war with the Beatles. And then many more perished, and it was all I could do to protect our boys, to keep them safe. But apparently, that offended him. He saw how protective I was of the boys, and he grew jealous. Why wasn't I that protective over him? Paying more attention to him, that I love them more than him. I'd wake in the night and see him standing over them as they slept, like a, a gruesome specter. Soon, he will snap. I know it. I can feel it. So I need him gone. Permanently. I don't dislike the Beatles so much as I just don't get what all the fuss is about. Uh-huh. Well, an egomaniacal praying mantis with a god complex is certainly a new one for me. But be he god or man, Tiss, I'll make him bleed. And I think you just told me how to do it. Oh? Yeah. Frame a beetle. You said you're at war with him, so I kill him. I, I kill him real good. And then I sprinkle some, some beetle antenna or uh, antennae, what is it? It doesn't matter. I'm not going to be saying the word as I do it. I uh, sprinkle some of the beetle stuff at the scene. That could work. But you have to be very careful. He's paranoid. He barely sleeps. It'll be very hard to sneak up on him. I'll stick moss to my feet and be real quiet. Tess! Ah! Rex, hi! What are you doing out here? And who's this? I, I'm, I'm just hanging it out. It, I'm hanging. I'm hanging out. I'm keeping it cash. I'm cash. We're cash. Hanging out? You were supposed to be home watching the children. I'm going out on a raid tonight, and I need to prepare. We discussed this, Tess. I know, but this nice... It's like you never listen to me. Like I don't matter. <laughs> Why don't you think I matter, Tess? You're not thinking of abandoning me, are you? Um, well, you... Hey, man. Hey, man. Tell me, what is a scorpion doing all the way up in Vermont? Well, the truth is, sir, I was just asking this here young mantis which way the nearest maple syrup factory was. You see, I, uh, I come all this way from Nevada to fulfill my lifelong dream of submerging my body in a big old vat of that thick, rich goo and, and floating weightless in a viscous cradle of natal sludge. Oh, to be born again in sugar and sap. Oh, to be swaddled in the sweet, warm, unctuous embrace. Okay, okay, god damn. Tess, the scorpion is clearly deranged. You shouldn't have stopped to help him. You let everyone walk all over you, do you know that? Come on, let's go. Goodbye, scorpion. I hope you find your syrup. And when you do, make sure you don't leave until you've had your fill. I understand, ma'am. Make absolutely sure there is no more syrup when you're done. Got it. Tear the syrup's fucking head off. Fuck yeah, I get it! Tess, you are behaving most unusually. Do you know this scorpion? No, no. Don't lie to me. I wouldn't. Rax. You are. I see right through this flimsy misdirection. And you know how I know. <laughs> because you never give yourself fully to anything. This little act right here is but one example. There there were your insipid efforts to, to start a book club. The bookstore is torn down. You don't believe in this war we fight against the Beatles? This war that has consumed so many of our brothers and sisters? You can't commit to watching the children. You pull away from responsibility after responsibility. You... you pull away from me. I feel you flinch when I touch you at night. You couldn't even perform your basic fundamental function, sexually cannibalizing me. And while I am, of course, grateful for your lapse in your biological imperative, it speaks to your overall cowardice. Tess, you are weak. I pity you. <laughs> you know what? I am sorry you came all this way, Scorpion. But I don't think I'll be needing your services anymore. 
Rax, this is long overdue. Yes! You did! Scorpion, do you want to try some of his head? It's pretty good. Aged more than most mantis heads. More time for the flavors to mature. Okay. Yeah, yeah, let me let me try some. It's pretty good. Uh, I was really looking forward to killing that guy, though. You know, I guess the lesson is... If you let a male member of a species live long enough, they'll eventually become a monster. Maybe I should kill myself. Let's not make this a teaching moment. I think he was just a piece of shit. But... I think... I also... needed to be the one to do it. I mean, I hired you because I didn't want my kids to know, that's true, but... I also think I hired you because... I was scared. I didn't think I could do it, I didn't think I had it in me. But I did. I did. And I'm so sorry that you came all this way. So I want to pay you. It's the least I can do. Well, it'll probably take me like three years to get back home, so yeah, I'll take it. After we're done eating, you can follow me to my home. I have two vats of Vermont's finest maple syrup just waiting for you. Big enough to cover myself in and eat my way out? Absolutely. Awesome. God, I love Vermont. Give me something to do. episode three thanks so much for listening everybody uh thank you to me because i played both parts also thank you to anna holmquist of the band esther for our wonderful outro song lock me up catch them all around chicago they play everywhere all right see ya